welcome to Walford Weekly, your weekly EastEnders podcast, where this week we'll be discussing the episodes released on the BBC iPlayer in the UK from Monday the 5th to Friday the 9th of July. And he is back with a vengeance. After a very heavy weekend, we have Rob. Hello, Rob. Oh, hello. Just about recovered. Hello, everybody. How are you? <laughs> How are we all today? Yeah, just about recovered. Um, it was one of those nights where, you know, like, I took so many, so many cocktails, Alex. So many cocktails. I'd forgotten how quickly cocktails can get you drunk. You know, you just go there and you, you order two and, 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 you know, the stuff they put in cocktails now. It's crazy. Cream, chocolate ice cream. Like, honest to God, it's like an alcoholic Ben and Jerry's. It's mad. It's, um, it's oh, well, yeah, nothing you'd drink because obviously, you know, be, uh, you'd have a nightmare. How do you even do, I bet you can't even do cocktails for the majority, can you? Well, I can, I can, but I wouldn't drink creamy ones anyway, because I had a real bad night once with um, Malibu and milk. Did you used to drink, when you were young, did you used to drink Malibu and milk? It was like, okay. a, it was a quite Not a, milk, was no. a craze for about a couple of months. Oh yeah, no, I drank one night out, Malibu me and my friends milk. thought, you know, we're cool. This was when I was at college and had Malibu and milk, and I had the most horrendous sickness for about two days afterwards. And I just feel like the alcohol curdled with the milk in my, in my tummy, and I need, and I just, I just, I just can't have alcoholic cream drinks ever again. Because they used to have those cream egg shots as well, didn't they, years ago? And that, yeah. Yes, I remember So that. no. But I can have other things like June buggies and stuff like that. But then, no wonder you were feeling unwell then, because you were mixing all your drinks. You were having what vodka, gin, rum. Oh, I always do. Like, yeah, I always do. But yeah, I'm a nightmare. Once I once I get like a little bit drunk, I'm like, I don't care. I have, a, I have this I have this really nice theory that you know, hangover knocks one day off your life, but you know, getting drunk with your mates that's lifetime worth of memories. And like, and then you say memories, and it's just like, do I remember any of it? Probably not, because I was too drunk. Yeah. But. <laughs> I had a great time. A woman, ca- a woman came on to me. A woman offered to ta- offered to take me yes. home. I could have had a whole different lifestyle oh, if I if I'd accepted that. I mean, I've, I I I feel like an old man for saying this, but I I about five six years ago, I realised that if I wanted a night out, but remember what I've done, I stick to either wine all night or beer all night. Wine. Never mix grape with grain. You see, that's what I've always been told, and and I've learnt that now. Because you have a horrendous hangover if you mix the two together. So I either stick with wine or I stick with beer. And I and I and I very rarely have a spirit with it. Although I do remember my birthday when um Ben treated me and a few friends to go to we hired a karaoke room. Um and this was in Bournemouth, mm-hmm. this is when I still live down south. And I did mix a lot of alcohol that night, and all I remember is a picture that Ben posted i think he posted it on facebook as well so you might be able to find it if you can find his facebook account and it's just me laying on the stairs like an out and like an outline of like a police crime <laughs> and i fell asleep on there and this was a horrendous angle <laughs> and um just woke up the next morning with a bit of a creaky neck and just that i think it was at that moment i was like i'm never mixing my alcohol drinks again so you've got that to come rob because you're much younger than me you're much more sprightly yeah. So you've got that much, that. much, much. Yeah, I'm much, much younger than you. Yeah, it's it's uh, what good twenty years. You've got a good twenty years or so on me or something, haven't you? Oh, at least, at the very least. Um, I want you guys to uh, remember that if you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe and to forget, remember to put the thumbs up button, hit us a like and comment below with anything we discuss on the show about EastEnders this week. We really do appreciate it. But you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. Rob will tell you all the details at the end of the podcast. Uh, but it's also probably popped up at the bottom of the screen while we were talking nonsense to each other there at the beginning of the show. However, enough of the nonsense. We are now going to talk about EastEnders itself. And yet another, like we said last week, another great week. It's like they're hiding these great weeks yeah, behind the iPlayer. <laughs> it's a shame because it's. I've really, I really enjoyed this week. So uh, first of all, we're going to talk about Patrick, Lola, and Cherie, um, and and of course also Isaac. Um, Isaac came back from his friend's house. His friends chucked him out. He had enough. We, I, were, we were quite him? surprised that his him? friend took him in. Yeah. <laughs> We said this last week, didn't we? Like, can you imagine this guy just turned, like, I, you know, we appreciate he's ill and he's not and he's not in a great place right now. But honestly, just turning up at your mate's house and staying there for, I thought it was just going to be overnight. No, he was there for a good few days. He'd be like, no, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't even know who Paul is. Like, get out. Like, <laughs> I've run out of beer. I've run out of pizza and I've run out of theories. Just go away. So I don't blame him, really. Mm. So he returned home and uh, surprisingly, Cherie is still adamant that she could look after him on her own. Um, Patrick wasn't too sure, said he needed outside help. He seemed to 
Isaac seemed to communicate very well with Lola still. Lola seemed to still be able to tap into him and his psyche. Um, and Isaac trusted Lola still. But Sheree seemed to not want and her have anything to do with him anymore, blaming him solely for his breakdown. I mean, do you think that's fair? Do you think Lola was to blame? Because I don't think. I think it, it was it was it was waiting to happen almost up until that point. Mm. Yeah, I, it's not it's not really fair on Lola. I think Cherie is just basically being massively overprotective. Um, and to be fair, it's all very well for her to say, you know, I'm not on my own this time. I've got Patty. It all is well. I mean, Patty is, you know, quite an old bloke who's kind of still recovering from a stroke. So he's not going to be majorly helpful. Um, but of course, Patrick did return all of uh, the things that uh, Isaac stole to Ruby this week, including the diary and all that sort of thing. I think Ruby's been massively understanding mm. as well. You know, as she goes through her, yeah. her father's artifacts and discovers all these theories about how he's a murderer and just go, oh, really? yeah, cool. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'll have these back. Cheers. I'll put them under lock and key. Um, <laughs> oh, but bless him though. Um, yeah, Isaac's really, really not in a great place right now. In fact, I think this week kind of showed that he's progressively getting worse and he had a scene um, where it was just him on his own in the living room and I can't believe that we've not heard anything that's going on in his head or anything like that. They are being so sort of like... <laughs> I was, we were both convinced, weren't we? We were both absolutely convinced that this mm. is an era where, you know, we would hear all the voices in his head and all that sort of thing. We're not hearing a thing. It's, it's I, I can't believe it. It's crazy. Um, and he did a thing where, like, he, well, I saw a few, I saw a few people on Twitter saying that that scene they they'd used incidental music for. It's like, no, they didn't. He put the music on to drown out what was going on in his head. That's yeah. quite a common thing with, with, with schizophrenics. So yes. that's, Yep. That's a very well. It was a very well done scene, and I was kind of feeling really sorry for him at that point. So I don't know what's gone on. I don't know what they've been drinking, but keep it going. It's excellent, and we're really pleased with it so far. Well done, <laughs> EastEnders. This is it's going well. Yeah, <clears throat> it's entirely reined in for them, isn't it? Um, with the recent uh, what well, they do recently with um, EastEnders storylines. Um, I think. I mean, they slowed down footage to do I a mean, dart the, the, for it, goodness' it, sake, and yet they can't. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I don't want but to, to say they can't we're not saying you should just because you can doesn't mean you should we're saying that you know I, and I, I think it's I don't know I'd love to know what people's opinions are with it because I think people are quite split with the some people quite enjoy it because they feel like it kind of boot, uh, bolsters the scenes a little bit and I do get that side of the argument but then we we kind of then make the counter argument yeah but this is a soap this isn't a, a drama this is a soap so it's kind of meant to be a slice of realism so you're meant to be there watching him rather than there watching him with earphones in and hearing his heartbeat and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I'd be interested to know what people think because, I mean, not a lot of people comment on it when it's not used. It tends to be commented when it is used and then people kind of come out of the woodwork and say, oh, no, I think it's fine. I, you know, I think it's perfectly normal for them to use this kind of stuff. It's it's how modern soaps are going down and they're developing to use. Um, so I'd be interested to know what people's thoughts about that is. I mean, personally, I, I prefer in them not to use it. And I'm an ambassador. For, I, I was one to say that I didn't mind them using it from time to time as long as it's used considerably, yeah. considerably, uh, considerately considerably <laughs> um but uh martin this week martin yeah i've already started martin this week uh showed I'm an understanding to too because him and gene were talking about <laughs> you should be him and gene were talking yeah. about how stacy had a very similar uh breakdown uh with her bipolar and uh she and he was yeah and she, and gene was like you know it, you, you just have to be there and understanding and so martin was very understanding with Ruby toward uh, Cherie and Patrick's plight about uh, Isaac too, which I thought was really good. And it and it made it even more, it made more sense that they then put together the Isaac story with Ruby and it didn't feel quite so like forced with the Paul storyline so much either anymore because it kind of, as a group, they it made sense to have a storyline with them all together. Mm, I really liked that they mentioned, like, well, kind of sort of mentioned Stacey's postpartum psychosis story. Um, and talking about how Martin mm. dealt with it and how difficult it was for him. Because to be fair, you know, the Trumans have had nothing yet on what Martin had to deal with. <laughs> you know, like Stacey standing on the <laughs> standing behind glass and calling everyone demons and all of this sort of thing. Like nothing on any of that. So <laughs> they've got all that to come. That's going to be fun. Um, yeah, no, it's really impressive. <laughs> uh, I, I, I honestly, right now, can't praise this storyline enough. It's going slowly. It's doing its thing. It's ticking away in the background and it's just going really, really well. And it seems now to have been really well, really well researched and they're doing it all to all to plan. And, you know, the, the, the actor playing Isaac is 
he's nailing it, I think, as well. He's really kind of showing off that really like scared paranoia thing that's going on inside his head. It's brilliant. Mm. I'm very, very happy. Fast forward two weeks when we're talking about this again, and everyone, you know, they'll have half the troopers dressed dressed up as demons with all this incidental music playing in the background. And we're like, <laughs> well, we enjoyed the build up, <laughs> but we'll see. Like when Robbie was walking down the uh, train tunnel and you saw Rainy handing him drugs um, <laughs> in a kind of mad blur, in a haze yeah. of in a craze. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope not because, as like you say, it's been doing. It's being done very. It's been done very well, and um, I like that Cherie kind of doesn't want to let anyone in. And it does, it has, and I, again, I say this every week, it has very much echoes of Joe in the 1997 episodes yeah. when his mum didn't, yeah. echoes, when uh, his mum didn't want, you know, the outside let in to their troubles and was adamant that, you know, if she, she could calm them down, she can solve it. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a story that needs to be told again. And it's, it's yeah, yeah, very good, very good EastEnders. But um, as you say, give it a couple of weeks and uh, <laughs> we'll see where we are. We'll, we'll see. Uh, uh, a story that has had a couple of weeks to kind of bubble along and also an almost a redemption for Peter this week is uh, Bobby and Dana, who um, after know. Peter stepped in, got Dana's phone number from Bobby's phone. Well, I, th- I think everyone believed that the story was actually going to be that Peter was going to kind of step in and uh, then start seeing Dana himself. But no, Peter yeah, that's where stood I up for his going. brother this week. Mm. A wonderful moment when he stood up for his brother um, and he and he finally said also to Dana <clears throat> that he forgave him, that it, it, it's far more difficult to be angry at, at him and he finally forgives him uh, for what he did to his uh, twin sister. I mean, mm. hooray, Peter. Kind Peter is maybe showing his ugly head finally. I can't see it lasting somehow though, can you, really? Because... Peter, like this Peter is just obsessed with himself. All right, so for him to have this week was lovely because I gen because you know when he cause especially when Bobby turned around to him and started having a go at him and said you don't understand love, Ugh. and then you know kind of stormed out. Um, and Peter kind of smirked as he picked up Bobby's phone and was like, oh god, where is this going? What's he gonna do? But then he genuinely, you know, sat down and down in this kebab shop and you know Dana was saying how much Bobby had heard had heard her and all that sort of thing. Peter basically said, yeah, well. He's just he's done much worse to me, love. All right, so if I can go over that, you can go over this. Trust me. Which, you know, I can't fault him. He did really, really well. And I'm I, I honestly I do think Bobby and Dana are such an adorable couple. I'm really enjoying watching mm. them because it's nice to see Bobby having this sort of normal relationship. She knows everything about him now. She keeps coming back for more. You know that must have been a great first occasion. That's that's all I can say. You know. The, the Beale genes clearly running deep within Bobby's veins. Uh, and it's it's really nice. I mean, Ian like, hasn't had, like, what, like... five wives for no reason. <laughs> exactly, you know, practised well, you know. <laughs> so I think it's really, really nice. Um, and of course we had um, Terry sort of helping along. I do like, I've, I'm enjoying Terry's role in basically just trying to love make all around the square. Kim needs to be taking advice off Terry. <laughs> for how to actually set people up, because <laughs> he's doing. A, I think he's doing a much better version, a job of it than than he is. Terry clearly needs to be working for Foxcatcher because he is just obsessed with getting everybody yeah. together and sorting out their relationship problems, including his own. So I, yeah. But the um, yeah, I loved I love Dana and I love Bobby, and I'm really intrigued to see where this Dana story is going because apparently there's stuff to come. I'm presumably we're going to find out more about Dana, mm-hmm. and she got the bracelet back this week, so that's clearly relevant. So yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, her mum's bracelet. His dad, her, sorry, her dad called her during uh, when Bobby was trying to make up with her. Um, so they they they're planting the seeds for the story now for Dana's history, family, and background. Um, I just want to touch one more moment with Peter because I just thought he had such a lovely line when he said uh, about his brother. Um, he said, "You can't, you can't. It's hard to hate someone who's so harmless." And I thought that was such a quite a mindful thing for Peter to say. It's like we've we've been so used to this kind of Neanderthal Peter, yeah. But since yeah. he's like been reintroduced onto the soap, he's just been this kind of ugh uh, ugh, and he ran around the square of his cave and fell over in his head, and then was like, oh, I feel yeah. well. And you know, and then we've been just used to this kind of very yeah. primitive man on the show and for him mm. to have that kind of light bulb moment and then to announce it and also to announce it to dana not to have it like it's i thought it was funny that he didn't he's not said that to bobby um and he doesn't want he's almost doesn't want yeah. bobby to know <laughs> that he does forgive him but at the same time 
you know, this this brother relationship between Bobby and Peter is exactly what I wanted to see um, between them. Mm. And I wish, I just wish they kind of had started it either a little earlier or from the start. Because the whole reason Peter came back was kind of because Bobby had been beaten up over a hate crime and Kathy had called him and asked yeah, him to true, return. Yeah. And so we kind of, so we thought he was coming back to, you know, care for his brother and forgiveness was almost, uh, it, it, you know, there anyway without needing to be said and so yeah no mm. I, I like this relationship between bobby and peter and i mean i wouldn't mind if bob if peter kind of ladded up bobby a little bit because we've said it in the past and bobby is he's such a sweet kid but i just think he just needs to learn to be a bit more confident within himself and i i think peter's the man to do it for him so i'm glad that this new peter is slowly starting to show his ugly head but as I almost like the Isaac story, I don't know if, we, if we're going to see in a couple of weeks' time that it's just going to be back to normal Peter, and he's just going to be mean week. and cruel to his brother. Let's not again. get overexcited. Yeah, <laughs> let's not go overexcited. It's been one week, all right. <laughs> one week of Peter being a semi-decent human being. Remember last week? You know, we weren't saying <laughs> that about him at all last week. So let's just let's just not count our chickens before they've hatched into any baskets mm. just yet. And then, yeah, it's funny you mentioned about the uh, why he was originally brought back because you can't really like you look at this Peter and you think what Kathy thought that he'd be helpful. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I know Peter <laughs> needs to come back and like make everyone feel better. Yeah, this Peter is is has really solved everything. Um, but yeah, it should be it should be interesting. I know what you mean though. It seems quite strange that like I know Peter has sort of said to Bobby, "Oh, it's right, I forgive you" and all that sort of thing. But I think I remember at the time when he said it to Bobby, neither of us were convinced that he actually meant it. And there was some other stuff, and there was some other stuff going on at the time that sort of made us confused about Peter's motives. So, for him to actually have this conversation with Dana is kind of quite nice. And I also, it, it's almost like he doesn't want to reveal his true feelings to his brother. Um, and it'll be nice, but I, it it'll be nice to sort of see their relationship build up as well, because so far Peter has just been giving Bobby really bad advice, like really, really bad advice. Like be like me, the worst advice you could possibly give mm. anybody. So, um, <laughs> but we, but nice we wondered to see them if sort he of was giving the bad advice to sabotage him. But but yeah, we mm. wondered if he was giving the bad dev- advice to sabotage yeah. Bobby's life. But clearly, now he wasn't. Maybe before he could have been. But as I say, this probably this bond that they now have, it's nice to see it. It's just a shame that Ian can't be there to see it either. But um, Adam Woodyet's fluttering around the south of England at the moment. He's at the Mayflower Theatre. He is my old haunt. So, uh, get him doing his play do you know his contract is up yeah do you know his contract is, is up like he hasn't renewed it yes so Ooh. that's interesting don't you think that's strange slightly nerve yeah. slightly nerve wracking isn't it imagine no more Ian ever again mm. discussion for back. another day well I don't I don't think I don't mm. think yeah I don't think he'll never come back but it's just I don't know. There's a trend of actors who doesn't want to come back <laughs> at the moment. And it's just, you know? Yeah. 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 We'll see. We'll see. We'll uh, see what happens. Cat, Phil and Denise. Yeah. Cat, Phil and yes. Denise now. Um, they, uh, Cat convinced Denise to let Phil see Raymond this week. And Phil repaid that, uh, that kind of trust by doing something that he was told implicitly not to do. And that's, yeah, yeah that's tell Raymond that well. he is his father. Now, yeah, first of all, I'm a bit disappointed that it was released so quickly because I thought there was, it was such a, such a good story that could have been built up there that they could have maybe made that much more, more impactful. If they maybe had just given it a bit more time. Maybe if Raymond was a little bit older, I know that's waiting a long yeah. time into the future, but it would just be nice if well, Raymond could have been time. a bit more like, yeah, and Raymond could have been a bit more kind of aware of that his father was Phil, rather than Phil saying, do you know yeah. your father and this is your empire? And then Raymond being like, yeah. Broom, broom, cool. broom, broom, broom. Yeah. And then Try that was like, car, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you said last week when Raymond, yeah. like if, if, if anyone went up to Raymond and gave him a football, Raymond would probably think he's like the newest god in his life. That day. He's like <laughs> the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, I mean, Denise is understandably upset by that because she's she didn't really want Phil in his life anyway. But then Phil kind of reminded him, reminded her that he was the one who brought Raymond back to here, back to her. So you know, she's mm. she's got some gratitude to give him for that. Um, but then to kind of 
betray her. I, I, I get why Denise was upset, don't you? I see so the thing is, I don't really. It's like I said last week about how little Raymond cares about who any of his parents are. As long as he gets fed, as long as he has something to play with, and as long as he has something on the TV, and as long as he gets cared for and loved, Raymond's happy, and he doesn't. He's not bothered about giving people titles or anything like that at the age of three, really, is he? So I'm sort of struggling with what exactly is so bad about Raymond knowing that Phil is his dad at the age of three. Like, I I don't see like if it was somebody older, you know. It would be, it would be, it would be wrong for him to kind of say, "Oh, yeah, I'm his dad." By the way, I'm Phil Mitchell, and I'm your dad. Because that would be terrible news. Because that would mean that your life was immediately in danger. Because anything that happened to you, Phil would get involved with, and guns and shenanigans would ensue. But the thing is, Raymond's three, and I can't really see Phil being that dangerous. You know, for a kid nicking his toy at crash. You know, I don't really, I don't see what the, I don't really get what the problem is at the moment. Because and it's not like nobody else in this. Everybody knew about it in the square. Like realistically, yeah. How long did Denise think this was going to stay quiet? On the, in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> the worst. Fair, I think it's done pretty square. well. <laughs> ever, and I think it's done pretty well to last this long. I think she should be thankful that he's he's lasted. You know, to, to nearly the age of four. Because it's been a while since I think Raymond's been around for nearly <laughs> close to a year now, probably. So he's not done bad, to be fair. In terms of really? Wolf and Secrets, this one's up there with one that's gone on for long, for a long, 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 long time. So you know, shut your face, Denise, mm. and just and just be happy with it. Um, yeah, this is the thing. Do I don't you, really get do you what think the problem that she's is. She's angry because of the mistrust, though. But do you think it's because of Possibly. the mistrust that she trusted him to not say something, but he said it anyway? So it's not so much the secret, what the secret was told to Raymond, but more the fact that it, that she trusted him not to say it. And I know you're, you're, and mm. you're absolutely right when you say that everyone, everyone in Walford, nay the everyone. world, probably knows that Phil Mitchell is <laughs> is Raymond's dad. But at the same yeah. time, Denise trusted on 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 cat and phil's word well maybe not phil's word actually but on cat's word and yeah, patrick convinced <laughs> her to do it too mm. <laughs> you know though that like she was convinced she was adamant that it wasn't gonna happen but she was convinced by patrick and by kim and by cat that you know just give phil a chance and she gave phil a chance and quite characteristically you're right about that too very much in phil's character he completely decided nah i'm phil mitchell i can do whatever i want yeah. and so did and so for, i think that's yeah. for me i think that's what denise was angry about and upset about that she basically gave him an olive branch and he just went <laughs> and threw it away <laughs> yeah 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 i should say like that uh, when, it, when when alex said that um you're quite right very encouraged to feel that was a conversation that we had off camera during the week when we were watching it, oh, <laughs> like, sorry, we do yeah. this when you, you we do, we even do this when you're not watching. That's our lives. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we still talk about EastEnders. <laughs> yeah, that's even all we do. <laughs> no, all we do. I don't know anything about this guy apart from EastEnders. Not a thing. Not a thing. I just learned his name is Alex. I haven't got a clue about anything else in his life. We just talk about EastEnders, <laughs> and that's about it. Uh, <laughs> um. Yes, of course, because Kat was the one that um, kind of stepped forward and really sort of laid the groundwork for uh, this one visit that Phil managed to mess up um, with revealing the secret um, of Phil. Because Denise, at one point, at some point, was adamant. No, you never seeing him again. That's, that's it. You know, Monday. No, never seen him again. Kat kind of walked in and was just like, "Look, Denise, love. Let's just have a quick conversation about this, all right? Really." And managed to convince Denise that, you know, Raymond should be allowed to see Phil, give Phil a chance, Phil will behave, I promise. And then by Friday, Denise is like, no, never seen him again. No, that's it. No, you're done. And by the end of the week, pretty much, uh, and it, I mean, it's kind of going a little bit, what did, what's the phrase you used? Carousel-like at the moment, isn't it? Where, you know, we'll start the week in this position. It's, it's the Mitchell and we'll carousel. And then we'll end, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll end the week in this position, <laughs> having been all the way around. Um... Mm. But by the end of the week, Phil has called a, a, a line I quite enjoyed. Called Denise to Mitchell HQ, which I quite liked. Um, and um, <laughs> I don't appreciate being summoned to Mitchell HQ, Philip. Yeah, I liked that. Um, and basically, has implied that he's going to fight for Raymond, and in, like he's going to go for custody. Let's be fair here. Can't see. I don't know what yeah. Phil thinks he's doing here because that's not going to work out, is it? Who? What judge in the land no. is going to look at someone like Phil Mitchell and go, yeah? Let's leave the kid with you. Great idea. It's not going to happen. So I'm not really sure what Phil <laughs> thinks he's doing now. 
No, it's, it's unlikely. And also, don't forget, he also had Denise sign paperwork so that Raymond was in her custody. So he's yeah. kind of, oh, I bet he's always legally that. binded himself. So he's legally binded himself into a bit of a hole anyway. But this this decision that yeah. he made was, as you say, because Denise said that you're not having anything to do with Raymond anymore, which perhaps was a step too far. But again, I kind of got why Denise did it. But also that conversation in the pub with Billy this week, um, which I kind of wanted to touch upon because it kind of it seems like they're kind of building something up with Billy because they, he had a chat with Billy and he asked uh, him when Honey took uh, their son away to go to Canada. Why, why didn't you fight? And Billy said, well, because I thought it was the right thing to do at the time. But if I now, if I, retrospectfully, mm. I probably would have fought for him now and kind of kept him. But then Phil said to him, you need a wash. So are we going into, so <laughs> I know that's a really weird thing to kind of pick up on. I know, but and, 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 and I really picked up on it. And for a little Depression, while, I kind of had to pause <laughs> watching EastEnders that's what i'm wondering yeah. do you think we're going into a storyline here where there's a kind Possibly. of he's getting so upset about honey and jay because that's a that's a thing you do you know it, it's quite a common thing you do as well you just forget to look after yourself don't you when you're feeling really really down in the dumps um and you know and this is no this is no slight but kate oates loves male mental health <laughs> that's one of her favorite things to, yeah. it's one of her favorite stories to do because she's got you know experience working for samaritans as we've said before you know she we've explored kate oates's Know, history with the with mental health stories as you know as we've gone along you know with mick and and all that sort of thing so exploring actual depression what we tend to do with sort of mental health stories is that we tend to go from i'm upset to straight more or less straight away to the extremes of you know calling some marriage and standing on the edge of a bridge being talked down from the extremes of it well very rarely do we actually go through the whole journey of depression and talking about how you feel on a day to day basis? I'd quite enjoy. I think that's quite an important story to tell, um, and I can't think of anything else it could be because it was a very, very random line to throw at him. It was so random. Yeah. I, I, I was like, "You're like what? <laughs> Why? I mean, you know, out of all the people, <laughs> Billy, I can imagine being one of the people. If Billy take a shower, but it, you know, that's probably half the reason why he, you know, he." he he, he might feel a bit depressed. It could make sense. You know, he see, he's seen Jay and Honey um, sort of being happy. I'm glad he's seen Jay and Honey, because we're bloody not. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and seeing his kids <laughs> and enjoying their company and all of that sort of thing. Jay's so underused yeah. at the moment. I don't like it. Um, so I can imagine, and you know, and his one sort of thing with a relationship, when with Marlene, the agent, that didn't work. So... No, I it, it it might be something to explore. It's the only thing that I can think of as to why the scene ended with that line. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think it was meant as a joke either. I don't know. It just didn't. It didn't no. seem to be put across as a joke. It didn't feel like a joke. I just no. And so it, it no. So I instantly thought there is there a hint there? Is there something? Because as you were saying, mm, Billy, I think Billy seems to be. I know we don't see a lot of um Jay and Honey's relationship at the moment, but Billy seems to be out of their lives now and to his mm. maybe because of his own fault perhaps because he's chosen to be but also his kids lives may be attached to that too and so he doesn't feel like he's in the, in getting involved with their you know growing up um and i don't know it just when that line got dropped i just thought mm. there has to be more to that than than we think yeah um, anyway because we did see jay kind of have a conversation try we did see jay try and talk to billy later on in the week and he wasn't getting any sort of response and, and all that sort of thing so i don't know yeah like you say we'll see we'll see keep an eye on it we'll stick a pin in it well sticking with the mitchells i suppose um and the mitchell carousel as uh we we now the phrase has been coined uh it's ben and callum time yeah they're back they uh we had a week hiatus <laughs> it was a it was a glorious week um and uh, but it's actually quite it's a quite an interesting story yeah <laughs> it was quite an interesting story because um ben got a phone call from pam such a shame that they couldn't have got the actress on. Or now, they I'm, chose not to get uh, Pam's the phone on. is getting taken away from her. I, the, I, you know, she came back in person to attend, you know, engagement parties. Came back to sack Billy. I don't, I can't remember why she came back last time, but to sort of meet Callum and talk to Ben and all that sort of thing. I feel that Pam, the character of Pam, would have come back to talk to Ben about this face to face. It feels like something that Pam, being the kind, wonderful, absolute goddess that she is would have come back and actually said this in person. So I don't want any more of Pam having yeah. phone conversations. Take her phone away from her, all right? She's only allowed to come back in person. Wow. Anyway, yes. 
carry on. God, <laughs> come on, honestly. But they might do courier pigeon instead, or telegram. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, talking about that phone <laughs> conversation, actually, there was a moment where <laughs> there was a moment where I I forgot that Ben has that um, hearing loop, and so it looked like he was just talking <laughs> to like the. Do you know what I? Like, there was no reply. I coming. know. I know. And, no, I not? know exactly what you mean because something about Ben on the phone. I I keep thinking, and I never I've never said it before. <laughs> said it before. I've always kind of meant to, but never thought about it. Like why he holds his phone like always like this at all times when he's talking. And I was just like like, and I was like, nobody does mm. that, Ben. Why are you doing it? Like trying to do like the whole sort of talking around on a loudspeaker and all that sort of thing. I realised that's not what he's doing at all. He's doing it so that the his, yeah. his thing can hear the phone call and all that sort the of hearing thing. Loop. So that's me shut up. Yeah, so that's yeah. me shut my face for now then, because <laughs> I can't criticise him for that because that's a genuine, legitimate reason as to why he did it and fair play that they've remembered that. So I'll keep my gob shut. <laughs> well, no, fair True, true. And actually, yeah. we'll talk about something similar where they they kind of remembered um, it, the Frankie and Zach scene later on that I want to talk about too, because I thought that was really well done too, um, between mm. them two. But we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that a bit later on. Ben and Callum, though. So Ben gets a phone call from Pam. Should have been yes. on the scene, but doesn't matter. And mm. she does. finds out that Simon, who is one of the guys in the group who basically killed Paul... Um, has been released on a lesser charge in front of instead of murder he uh has now been put down to manslaughter and he's done his time and he's been released now that's that's a good story fine um i smell shenanigans but we'll th- we'll come to that later maybe later in the few weeks time <laughs> fine but callum offers to then again mm-hmm. endanger his mm-hmm. job in order mm-hmm. to get information about Simon so that Ben can have a nice conversation with him, but don't get angry or violent with him. Now, first of all, that's never going to happen. How far back no, do you throw your head in say, frustration? Shenanigans. Mm. <laughs> no, shenanigans oh. are guaranteed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to find a warehouse. He's going to get tied up. Callum's going to be in the background going, no, Ben, don't be doing that. You promised. And then Ben's going to be causing all kinds of mischief. Yeah, mm. yeah exactly. And and as I say, but, but Callum's already been bailed out of his job once, twice, maybe three times, a lady, but by Jack. <laughs> and now he's doing, planning to do it again. It's mm. like, oh, no, the Mitchell carousel. Well, I wonder if this is going to be the thing that sort of sorts him and Phil out, because Phil will find out that, you know, Ben's been... You know, this gang have overcome Ben. The thing is about this gang, I remember when they first came in and were introduced about the, you know, the guys that beat up Paul, they all look like members of JLS. They look like the least threatening gang that I've ever seen in my life, like the members of One Direction. It's ridiculous. You remember? Like, they were so, like, young and, like, <laughs> young face. They don't look like your typical homophobic thug, you know? Um, so, uh, whether they'll, I doubt very much if we see this Simon again, he'll be the same. It was, wasn't it? Really, honest to God, um, they look like they should have won Britain's Got Talent. They were young than, lads. You know, be, go and they were young lads. I bet. I bet if we do see Simon here, he'll have been massively recast into this really intimidating looking thug with a sleeve full of tattoos, looking taller than the Russian guy that talked to Vinny a few weeks ago. He'll be massive. He'll be huge. He'll be muscly. He'll be the most intimidating thing we've ever seen in our lives. Um, and just so that he can, you know, tie Ben up and then Phil will discover what's going on and then Phil will save the day and Ben and Phil will be friends again. That's what my prediction oh. is of where this is going. So you know, you so you think they're gonna do something similar again? Because what the, the wasn't it that Yeah Oh no, because it happened when similar b- b- after Paul got and they kid they kidnapped yeah. Ben and yeah, Jay, yeah, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. That's right, and yeah, put them in yeah, a van. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so you think it's gonna be so you think Ben's with, gonna be one direction kidnap them, with one direction on a loop for torture. Yeah, that's what makes you beautiful. Ah! <laughs> We're gonna get <laughs> no. Yeah, twenty-four hour loop on that. That's his punishment. Um, Balam fans on one hand are criticizing us. One Direction fans on the other. We're screwed this week. I tell you, we're gonna. <laughs> We're in so much trouble. So, so much trouble. Much trouble. <laughs> um. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that's we're what, guaranteed yeah, shenanigans, aren't we? Basically. We are guaranteed shenanigans. Mm-hmm. What kind of, so that's the shenanigans. <sighs> Phil's going to save the day, and this is about repairing mm-hmm. their relationship because you can't repair a mutual relationship without someone getting shot in the head. That's just that's just the way life goes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I mean that, that's really pretty much all because it was it was it's a, it's a bit it was a build up scene this week, wasn't it? Um, so next week, yeah. it's gonna all it's gonna go down in in. This Elvis is the thing. I don't mind Callum. the. 
Ben I Simon. care less about the shenanigans things than you do. You know, we've been here before, and I care less about the shenanigans side of things than you do. It was the Callum thing that annoyed me. It was like, oh, it's fine, I'll check the records. It's just like, yeah. then. For goodness sake, Callum. Like, <laughs> like, how much do you... You can't, like, say that you want this job and love this job, and it's like your dream to have this job if you mm. keep putting your job in danger whenever Ben is in trouble or whenever Ben wants something done. Like, for the love of God. Anyway, yeah, we'll yeah. See how it but Callum did goes, say but... that his job wasn't as important as looking after you know Ben and making sure that his happiness in the world was you know contented enough. It's just it's not just also the Callum you know jeopardizing his job, but it's also the fact that he he actually believes that Ben is going to just sit down and have a little conversation with him, <laughs> like in the Albert over a coffee, sit and have a Starbucks. You know, that's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're Other gonna read, we're gonna read, like why you come to um, come meet come meet me in the Albert. That's exactly where this this thug that killed a gay man is gonna want to go, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> come meet me in the gay bar. It'll just, be fine. Uh, Neutral territory. It's it's just you can see it. Come, I mean, there's so many stories this week where I do, I genuinely don't know where it's going to develop. I, I you know yeah. I've got an idea, but I don't know where it's going to develop. But with this. It's literally just, it's paint by numbers. I just know what's going to happen. I can see I mean, it. And yeah, I'm not I mean, excited I like, about it. I like the fact that Paul has not been forgotten under any circumstances. And I think it's quite oh, telling completely. Callum seems to, like Ben and Callum seem to have this mutual understanding that if Paul was still alive, Callum would not be getting a look in with Ben. This is the thing, like Ben will literally sit there <laughs> devastated about, about something to do with Paul and Callum was just like, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, oh, I'll help you with that just to help you forget about this. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, I mean, because Paul, I, to be fair, same. I was devastated when Paul died. Ben and Paul were my ballon. I loved Paul. I thought Paul was a great character, massively underwritten, criminally underwritten, and cruelly axed, pointlessly axed. And I could go on for hours about how Paul being there was really a great sort of component for the Phil and Ben relationship at the time because I was really enjoying Because Phil, if you remember, those were the homophobic day Phil's before he would walk around with gay flags painted on his face and, like, you know, being the rainbow queen that he is these days. Um, <laughs> days and organising weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Young love, eh? Uh, yes, Philip. Anyway. Um, but no, you're right about Paul as well. And there was that story with Paul as well that they just kind of forgot about as well when he found oh, his out mom. his yeah. mum. Like they lied to him. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a great story. Anyway, should we let's should we talk about something else? Let's talk about Rainey, Stuart, and Vi. And again, it's a little story really where Rainey wants a little bit extra time with Stuart on her own. Um some really wonderful lines from Rainey this week. I have to say, some of the Brilliant writing lines. for Rainey this week was Cracking just lines. spot on. Oh, fantastic. Um, and and one of them is my line of the week. Uh, so you've probably seen it already. We've posted it on our Twitter and our Instagram and so on and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, so Vi and Rainey have come to a, an arrangement that perhaps their Vi should maybe spend less time hanging around watching horror films and eating uh, Savaloy and chips with uh, Stuart and, you know, let them have some alone time. Um you know, if, do you think it was a nice building building story for them? Do you learn a bit more about Vi, learn a bit more about the relationship between her and Tony? I, I quite I liked, quite liked that. I quite, I quite liked the stuff that was going on with her and Stuart. I really liked the idea of this nan and grandson watching graphic horror movies together, and that's the basis of their relationship. Explains a lot about Stuart, by the way. Really does that he you know he was brought up on last <laughs> don't the t- house last house on the left as an eight year old or something or something horrific like that. Um, I mean, I, 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 I hate horror films, don't you? I, I, I can't watch horror films for the most part. Like, those grisly sort of gory slash... I've got no interest whatsoever. I don't get their entertainment value at all. I don't see what is entertaining about watching some poor 18-year-old girl getting herself graphically garroted while she screams in agony. I don't get it at all. But, you know, it works for some people. Oh, I love them. I'm sorry. Do it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's fine, but do it. Why? Explain it to me. I'm genuinely <laughs> fascinated as to what. I love being scared. I like feeling scared. If it's 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 a feeling of being scared, hundred percent. And is. and um and it sometimes it, and sometimes I, I yeah for for like really scary horror films like I'm, I'm bad with jump scares. Also, I scream. I scream at horror films in cinemas and get laughed at all the time. So I'm not good at watching horror films. But I like I like that feeling of um, feeling a little bit like I'm uneasy. 
I don't mind like scary films, you know, like you know, sort of paranormal activity, all of that sort of. This is complete tangent here. I don't, you know, I don't mind like it's just gore. I can't, hope, I can't, I can't cope with. I don't do gore. Like I'm really not good with blood and, and all of that sort of thing. Like the psychological horrors, absolutely fine. I'll bring, I'll do them all day long. But you know, yeah. anyway, slashers, no, 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 no. Anyway, <laughs> so this was. Um, <laughs> let us know what you think about slashers and horror films in the comments section. Um, no, I was just going to say the Scream trilogy is my absolute one of my favourite trilogies of all time. So uh, watch them, watch the Scream trilogies because they're kind of like almost a tongue-in-cheek film slasher film thing. So you might enjoy them a bit more from from a writer's point of view. You might enjoy them a bit more. Mm. Everyone likes throwing those sorts of things at me when I don't know what I don't like. Oh yeah, they'll just throw that in as a sort of tip. <laughs> from a writer's perspective, you'll like that. It's like this little carrot being dangled in front of me. Anyway, um, so yeah, Rainy basically is well. The, the basis of the story this week is the fact that Rainy isn't getting laid enough. It's essentially you know she's not happy with the the lack of. <laughs> Uh, we, although we're reliably informed that Ben and Callum have no issues on that front whatsoever and do it loud, do it proud, every single night <sighs> with, with Vi in the house. I couldn't have sex with my nan in the house. Tell you that with nothing. Especially loud and proud. I'd be very sort of quiet and discreet if it was <laughs> if it was me, but, you know, I'm not Ben or Callum. <laughs> yeah, but Vi's a different kind of nan, isn't she? she? She buys pornography. And uh, for her son to <laughs> then use yeah, later on as a true. sample. So why is a slightly that's different true. nan to maybe the nan that your nan and my nan is? But um, I did I did enjoy sort of sexy rainy this week. Like he returns home from a long day at work from you know downstairs, um, and she's sort of scattered rose petals everywhere, <laughs> and he's, he's kind of emerges from the bedroom like, hello, can I help you? You know, and it's and <laughs> like sexy Rainy is a, is a sexy woman. Let's be fair. Like, you know, how could you turn that down? And even sure it's like I've had a long day, but I'm going in the shower and waking myself up. Um, <laughs> and I, I basically, what a considerate basically, man. Basically, you know, but I know, right? Um, and then basically by the um, the end of the story, it's not say it's not much of a story. It's just a sort of it's just a sort of almost story of the week type thing, isn't it? Um, you know, Vias agreed. I feel to like it was a character development. Bottom. Yeah. Which is great, uh, you know. And Vi sort of when is agreed to sort of go out once a week and every Sunday afternoon. Uh, and I, I, or I think also yes. what it was is it sort of established the fact that the secret that Vi's got about her being chucked out by Jono is you know still there and it's yeah. still there in the ether. Stuart's yet to find out about it. And Rainy is keeping this from Stuart, which I'm sure will be a bone of contention somewhere on the line. Mm. I mean, Rainey said that she's only keeping it from Stuart, not for Vi's benefit, but she's doing it for her own because you do, cause you can't handle Stuart being like angry and you know Stuart smash and you know that kind of thing. <laughs> no, so I, I I can see I can see Rainey's point of view there, um, but as you say, yeah, it, it, that, that's a good point. It was almost there to remind us that there, there's that secret. Yeah, but it's them there. Too. Yeah. Uh, talking of secrets, yeah, mm. and there's a big secret now on the square between Zach and mm. Frankie. Because uh, I, genuinely, I did not see this story coming, and I think it's brilliant. I love this story so much. I think mean, I'm Zach, story. I think it's helped because Zach is such Zach. a really interesting character, and I really enjoy seeing him I on love screen Zach. and his relationship with and Sharon. Fit. It's funny how they just kind of, and he's fit, and it's funny how they've kind of got them together so well, him and Sharon as well. <laughs> so I feel right. like Sharon's going to be thrown yes. into this. <laughs> I feel like Sharon's going to be involved with this with this story. I mean. Talk about Zach then. Talk about what, what makes him fit because I do talk about Karat quite a lot. So go on, tell me what, what is it about Zach that kind of <laughs> um, switches oh, just, your, um, tickles your shallow, pu- tickles my switches. Like I'm just purely <laughs> shallow. Tickles my swede all day long. You could like it's just yeah. You know when he was sat there tanning himself in the garden, I was like, thank you. That's excellent. Like, I like, like that. Very uh, you know, and he's just fit. And I, and the fair, he's a good actor as well. And I'm in, and I'm intrigued to see. And I love his relationship with Sharon. And I, I I think the other thing is of course that he because he has come along, it has taken Sharon, who is in desperate dire need of a brand new direction, and it's taken her in that. We know we've said that before. Um, it's, even though Sharon isn't really doing a huge amount at the minute, it has given her a sort of new lease of life, and she's got this new relationship. So that's nice to see. Um, yeah, this this story. I mean, to be fair, somewhere along the along the line of the week, I had read that Nancy was going to get run over by Frankie and Zach, and had zero idea why that would ever happen, and thought it sounded ridiculous. But then the way it happened, 
made total sense. And even the actual hitting made me gasp because of the way that they did it. They, you know, they were sort of mid sentence, and all of a sudden, Same. bang! So I was like, ah! um, so yeah, Monday was a great duff duff, um, and it's going to be a really interesting story because Nancy apparently doesn't remember anything of what gone on. Nancy's fine, but it's given her uh, the risk for. A load of worse epileptic fits is the is the main is the main issue here because of the fact that she had a head injury. Yeah. So that's um, and her fits already were getting quite bad. So this is really sort of put her back a few notches. So that's going to be that's quite a massive sort of thing um, that Zach and Frankie a have put her through and b you know have are now holding from her and not admitting that it's her. Jack being the you know the best policeman the wolf has ever seen was popping in and out of them of this story this week going I, I've heard something I've heard something and then we'll come back to the scene later oh no we haven't heard anything we haven't heard anything we don't know anything no, I'm nothing, sorry yeah. so Frankie kind of kind, <laughs> yeah, Frankie kind of going CCTV oh. was mentioned as well <gasps> yeah 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 CCTV that never works anywhere yeah. in London um, no and but, again yeah, didn't because work the thing again. is that... there was no no evidence coming no out. no no uh, because the thing is Zach. Um, was supposed to take Frankie for a driving lesson because Mick was doing something with the brewery, and Zach being Zach decided to get Frankie to drive into the pub where he just, where he probably literally just got sat and got drunk while she was just sat there cradling a lemonade or something, yeah. <laughs> and then got her to drive and then got him <laughs> her to drive him back. Um, and obviously the problem being that Frankie isn't a licensed driver and Zach was drunk, so he shouldn't have been given. So they're all they're in all levels of quite severe trouble, basically. So. You can kind of see why Zach's like, yeah, we really shouldn't say anything. But go on with what you were going to say about the uh, about the sign language thing in, in the car that happened this week. That was nice. Oh, yes, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was, again, I thought that's a real nice attention to detail, which maybe I shouldn't be so surprised by because, you know, EastEnders has a history of, you know, getting things right with yeah. things like this. Um, yeah, so after they hit... Uh, Nancy and there was a the, the obviously panic ensued. What do we do now? Uh, Zach came up with a plan, as you say, to kind of pretend that they found her like that, and it must have been another car that hit her. And while Zach was explaining this plan to Frankie, you know, very you know frightened and kind of talk, 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 talking very fast and probably moving around mm. like I am right now, like a madman. Um, Frankie yeah. co- obviously couldn't understand what he was saying. And so this frightened Frankie even more, you know, this, this poor deaf girl who's already in a situation where she's just hit her sister and she's, she's mm. worried because she's being told by Zach all these different pieces of information. And so she kept saying to him, look at me, talk to me, look at, talk to me directly, st- slow down. I can't understand what you're saying. And, but it was, portrayed so well between Frankie yeah. and Zach. That one scene, I just thought it was fan- just fantastic. Like I say, Monday's yeah, episode was really fantastic is. and that Duff Duff was superior. Honestly, mm. brilliant Duff Duff. Um, yeah. And even even when... I, I, mean, I, I, didn't read, I didn't read that spoiler that, that you said about like, Nancy was getting mm. hit. So I genuinely did not know Nancy was going to get hit by the car. Which um, happened. And so when it was like the Duff Duff Duff... I well, I mm. I thought I actually initially thought it was just going to be like a burst tire, and the story was going to be that Frankie was going to make a move on uh, uh, on uh, Zach, and that was going to be the story. Mm. I genuinely didn't. When they showed them the shot of Nancy laying on the road, I did gasp. I went, oh, I did, I thought, oh, it, oh. <laughs> so it was such a wonderful moment for me. I, I won't forget that moment. It's, it was a really good moment. I told you it's good to gasp at EastEnders, didn't I? Didn't I say? gasping yeah. at soaps going up the stairs <laughs> gasping and all that sort of thing yeah it's brilliant yeah I, I agree with you totally about the um about the death scene it t- and and to be fair it makes up for all those times where like frankie will be having a conversation with someone and, the, and they'll start arguing and then she'll walk away and she'll have that back to them and they'll go frankie frankie come back it's like she can't hear you stop doing that <laughs> like i get it it's a it's it's not that's not that's not carelessness is it that is just natural human response because you do sh- if someone's walking away you go oi come back here and you know unfortunately frankie can't hear that um you know <laughs> it makes those little moments like the one that we had a few months ago where Fra- where um <laughs> where mick left her a voicemail message or something like mick that was... you know all those sorts of things yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mick left a voicemail, so Frankie asked him to call her back instead of texting. <laughs> Don't, you're an idiot, Mick. Um, yeah, it's... But yeah, no, this story is really, really good. And so where do you think it's going to go? When I mean, what what do we think in terms of when it's going to get revealed or how it's going to be revealed? Or like predictions, what do you think? 
I mean, the relationship between Zach and Nancy was building anyway up until this point that they're now, mm. I think they're in a relationship or you at least get the impression that they are now. So it's so, it, it's such a typical EastEnders, nay, a soap moment that you're basically building a relationship on a lie from the very beginning, um, which I actually <laughs> love, actually, in this occasion. Mm. I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, it's the fact that this, the secret is also being held by Frankie as well. And she's only just been introduced to the Carters um, and Mick being her dad. And so that's another kind of string to the bow of the... Like, you know, she's probably feeling also worried that this one thing, if it came out, could completely ruin her relationship with her family that she's only just learned she's got. Um, mm. And she might get thrown out, especially with Shirley. You know, again, typical, typical Shirley, when he, she basically made out that as soon as she finds out who had done it, she's going to you know tear him apart. Um, you know, Shirley's the last person you want to kind of <laughs> encounter when a secret like this should yeah. come out. I'm wondering if we're going to see a kind of... Uh, a little bit of Zach's dad coming out. And so he manipulates Frankie a little bit to try to keep the secret from Maybe. the Carters. That's, I, I don't know if I'm excited about that or a bit worried about that, because at the moment I really like Zach's character mm. and I like that he's a bit cheeky and he's, you know, you know I've really warmed to him for that character. But obviously they do need to develop it a little bit further. I just think I worry that it's going to kind of ruin the relationship that they've already built between him and Sharon. But mm. I, I think Sharon's going to find out before anyone yeah, else so do I. and then it'll be so another kind of rift between sharon and uh, uh linda which will be quite a yeah uh, yeah, yeah. A moment between I, them again maybe i also think that mick's gonna find out before uh any of the rest of the family do because you know obviously mm-hmm. she's mick's daughter so i think there's you know because hashtag no more secrets um i think it's quite likely that mick <laughs> would keep that secret because you know, obviously nancy you know <laughs> Nancy's okay, she's alive. So um I think it's quite likely that she would keep that secret because I think really the only obviously the only reason that Frankie is with the cars is because of Mick. You know, if Mick wasn't bothered about Frankie or anything like that, she wouldn't be living at the Vic and you know, the cars get on with her. But, you know, with something like this, Linda would have no issue with going out uh, you know, and Shirley would have no issue no issue with saying out but with swear words. Um so <laughs> I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be interesting. Um but yeah, no, I think you're right. Sharon's going to find out um, and it's going to be interesting to see what she does with it. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see where this uh, we'll see where this goes. But yes, very exciting story going forward. I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing it develop. This has only just popped into my head and it's kind of a flyaway comment, but it's at least I just I don't know why I thought this. But would you reckon they would do something like that if Mick and Sharon were the two to find out first? And so they have a kind of secret rendezvous where they talk to one another and this and the other. Linda starts thinking that Mick's having an affair in order to kind of keep, I don't know, to try to keep it a secret, and this could be Linda's out, that she thinks that Mick's having an affair, and so she kind of goes and uh, leaves. I this is, like I say, this is just something that's <laughs> kind of come into my head. No, I mean, I, I, I hope, I hope they don't do something like that personally. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those stories that go in several different directions, isn't it? So uh, it'd be interesting. But I'm looking forward to it, though. We'll see. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, that, that was the main stories of EastEnders this week. However, we're going to do a I Ain't Want to Gossip special where we're going to talk about a special guest star that came onto the square, much to everyone's excitement. <laughs> was he any good or was yes. he a wet fish? We're going to now discuss it as this is a Harry Redknapp I Ain't Want to Gossip special. And you know me, I ain't want to gossip. So this week on EastEnders, we had a special Euro episode for the Euro Football Championships. Uh, and they introduced Harry Redknapp as himself onto the square, a friend of uh, Terry's, Terry Carnes, um, that no one believed him. And yet he came out of a car and the first thing he was like, all right, Terry, all right, Harry. Yeah, not so bad. Yeah, we've got so, um, so, yeah, basically, we're just going to talk about Harry's kind of entrance and whether he was any good on the show, because... Uh, a lot of people had a bit of criticism having Harry Redknapp on the show. And I don't think people really realised what he was meant to be on the show. Because there was kind of rumours flying around that he was actually going to be an actor playing a character, like if not playing himself. But um, obviously those those rumours were quashed quite quickly. But when we found out that he was literally playing Harry Redknapp and he was kind of walking around the square having selfies being taken with Billy. Uh, Mick was kind of in awe, almost fangirling over him. And... Uh, you know, in the Vic, and uh, and he and he also said that Tommy had potential as a football star, much 
to um, Phil Mitchell's complete excitement. I thought he was lactating at one mm. point, Phil Mitchell, when he heard mm. um, you know, <laughs> Harry Redknapp say that about Tommy. Yeah. So, you know, what, 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 what did you think then? Did you think that Harry's introduction was a nice kind of little extra <sighs> for EastEnders this week? I didn't think it was as terrible as I thought it was going to be. All right, I didn't think Harry was that bad. I thought he, I thought he was quite. I thought it was quite. I thought, you know what, the word I'm going to use. I think it was all quite charming. You know, I thought it was quite nice. It was quite yeah. a, a jolly little thing to slip in. I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I get people saying, "What was the point?" I'm not entirely sure what the point was, but do you know what? I didn't mind it because it was nice. It kind of lightened the mood of the week a little bit. Um, you know, because bear in mind, we uh, I think that episode we also had um, Isaac having a meltdown in the, in the living room. So it was there was a sort of nice little juxtaposition between the two scenes. So I thought it was all right. Harry did perfectly fine, I think. I think he did all right. Um, you know, because and he had, and he was not like he was. You know, he was acting with like the likes of Danny Dyer and did a scene with Phil, with Steve McFadden and Jesse Wallace. So he was acting with the proper sort of soap actors there, and I think he carried himself all right. We met, yeah. seemed, you know, he did all right with his lines. Um, yeah, it was fun. I did like. I did enjoy the scene with Mick, uh, Linda, and him in the pub. I was like, that's relatable, isn't it? Like, because we'd all like to imagine. Yeah. You know, that when we meet a celebrity or we meet somebody that we're really we're big fans of, you know, I know full well that if I ever do meet Balvin the Sopel, that's exactly what I'm going to be like. Hey, hi, hi, Balvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah love, <laughs> love, you in Cor- love you in Corrie. Love you in Corrie. Yeah, cheers. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we thought, you know, it's, I thought it was perfectly relatable. And then you hate yourself for the rest of your life thinking how uncool you looked when you met that celebrity. Um but yeah, apart from that, it was it was you know it was fine, and th- I liked the reaction to everybody in the square. You know, Billy doing the sort of like not asking him for a selfie, but sort of like take like trying to do the yeah. camera thing from behind, and Harry knowing exactly what he was doing. All right, mate, do you get the picture there? Yeah, wicked. Um, you know, apart from Cat implying that he was a nonce, that was <laughs> you know, I think it was it was, it was, it was all pretty it was all pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was all pretty good. I I I did I, like I it. Think... I, you know, the point of it. Who knows? But it was all right. I I liked it. <laughs> it was obviously. I think it was for the Euros, wasn't it? Because they were having a Euro party, yeah. And maybe they knew yeah, yeah. ahead of time that they weren't going to be broadcasting the episodes with quite some prominence during the football matches. So they, because normally for like football tournaments or any kind of sporting event, they would normally film in scenes where they kind of discuss what had had actually happened during the football. They've not done that this year with the Euro tournament at all. They've not discussed the. England matches at all where they would normally kind of shoehorn them in somewhere mm. you know like there would be a scene between Billy and Honey and Billy would like say something football I'm not going to pretend I can say anything mm. football because I, I can't <laughs> but but you know what I mean and so uh, it's almost like the BBC's way of kind of saying we, we are, we're acknowledging that there's a football tournament happening mm. this this alternative world of EastEnders does still live in the same kind of timeline where a football tournament is happening around the world or in Europe um, and so we'll mm-hmm. we'll throw this in just for a bit of good measure just kind of like you know it's there I mean yeah the same as you I think I think the the world collapsing kind of theories that kind of were happening. And to be fair, we kind of jumped on that kind of bandwagon too, especially Ben. Ben kind of felt a bit like, you know, all these big stars are being sacked from the soap and then they're introducing Harry Redknapp. I think that was a bit kind of now in hindsight, a little bit kind of, you know, almost like wearing a like a sandwich board saying the end of the world is nigh kind of scenario yeah. ringing a bell and going up and down the street saying Harry Redknapp's gonna be in EastEnders uh, yeah. yeah you know yeah. it felt a bit like that afterwards so shame. A bit ashamed, you know shame. For kind of riling that. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. for riling that up maybe a little bit I think that was almost because the press kind of in- hinted that he was almost he was going to be a character on the show and not that he was just going to be a guest character where he played himself my favorite bit and the same as you but perhaps for different reasons was the mick linda uh and harry in the vic scene and for me it was because harry the way he was giving his line he was going oh yeah he's a, he's a star yeah yeah i love him oh yeah yeah he's always all right oh yeah he's, he's a good lad he's a good lad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he reminded me do you remember the old wonga adverts do you remember the wonga adverts from years ago when they had that puppet and the old man puppet and kind of walked around like that yeah, 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 and he yeah, used to yeah, talk yeah. like that he reminded me <laughs> harry read that reminded me of the wonga puppet did he like, uh, you know, with you as well i get i kind of get what you mean yeah it's, it says a lot that your brain went straight there but yes i do <laughs> I do, I, I do kind of know what you mean yeah yeah um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not a massive, massive fan of like these sort of soap cameo, you know, these cameo roles and all that sort of thing. 
Um, and we are, uh, I think it does o- kind of open the question of like, all these like celebrity stories that um, Terry's been telling, like, are they all true now then? Are we supposed to believe that he genuinely is quite, you know, he's yeah. got all of these contacts in his phone, you know? That was, because otherwise, because that was why Harry came to the square in the first place, wasn't it? Just to have a pint with Terry. <laughs> like, so, you know, and have a little natter about <laughs> the aura. So, you know, it was all very ran- It was all very random. It was all, you know, but it was lighthearted. It was fun. And Harry wasn't awful, which I think would have made it, like mm. this is this is cringe worthy. This is terrible. But he was all right at it, so it was fine. You know, like I say, now and again, these little yeah. bits of fun. I've got no, I've got no issue with them. All right, and we're sorry for anything that we might have said. We're sorry for like whinging about it. We're sorry for whining about it. But we admit we were wrong. <laughs> we do that on this podcast. When we're wrong, yeah. we hold our hands up and go, "We were wrong. You were right, Eastenders. You know what you're doing. We are mere." We are mere mortals, so we we enjoyed it. It was good fun. So there you go. See what happens next time next year when Prince Harry comes into it. God, yeah. Already, I mean, <laughs> I love to know people's predictions of which star is going to be next on the which, show. Which celebrity um, next? I mean, it's the Olympics mm. next, isn't it? That's some whip bread. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Chris Akabusi is who I was thinking. Yeah, Maybe. that could work. We're running out of sports people that I know the name of. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, get in touch with us. Let us know which sports stars you'd like to see or any celebrity you'd like to see on the show playing themselves. Uh, you can get in touch with us using the details that <clears throat> Rob is about to pass on to you right now. You can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at Wolford Weekly. You can find us on Facebook at Wolford Weekly Podcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications about all the videos that we are posting on there at the moment. And you can listen to us on Apple, uh, Podbean, Spotify or any of your favourite podcast sites. You can email me on robwolfordweekly at gmail.com or alexwolfordweekly at gmail.com. We would like to wish England the best of luck in the match tonight, if it happens. So, fingers crossed, it's coming home. I couldn't care less, but, you know, it's patriotic and all that sort of thing, so... Good luck, England. Uh, and we will be back next week. And until then, <laughs> we both England. bid you... <laughs> good luck, England. And until then, we will bid you goodbye. <laughs> what a day. Bye. Bye.